I've always suffered with insomnia. Even from a young age, like 9 or 12, it's always plagued me. I usually just stay up doing meditative things until I fall asleep. That's before I got my car and driver's license. Now I just take long drives to the rural parts of my county, where the woods and the farmland are. No one's ever on the road, so it's very peaceful. With that being said, it doesn't mean that I'm alone on these dirt roads. The things I've seen have both horrified and intrigued me. I'll share a few experiences I've had on these stretches of lonely road. Number one, the figure. During my late night drives, I went farther than I usually do. The road gets older and more overgrown in these parts. It basically leads to a very ancient forest with nothing but tire marks as a road. I'm driving and all of a sudden I catch something in my headlights. A tall humanoid figure covered up in bushes, facing a tree with its arms by its side, Blair Witch style. I've seen stuff like this before, so I just take a mental note, and I continue on exploring. The things you encounter out here at night aren't necessarily hostile, and they won't mess with you if you don't mess with them. I didn't see that particular figure for the rest of the night, and I didn't get a good look at them because of the bushes covering them. All I knew at the time is that they were tall as shit. I'm talking making basketball players look scrawny. Other than its freakish height, the proportions were all out of whack. One shoulder was huge and beefy, but had a twig-like arm attached to it, and the other shoulder was thin, but had a bodybuilder arm at the end of it. The night was pretty uneventful, so I decided to head back early and try to sleep. The next night was much more interesting. As for usual, I couldn't sleep, so I hopped onto my car, and I, I drove to the rural dirt roads. I decided to head back into the deep woods to see if I could see that weird, tall figure again. I'm driving slowly down this forest for about 30 minutes, radio off, dead silent woods, and I don't see a thing, which is pretty uncommon not to see something weird. I closed my eyes and I sighed, running my fingers through my hair. When I opened them, the figure was there. Misshapen body, arms at its sides facing the opposite direction. It was directly in front of my headlights and I got a better look at it. This thing was wearing a filthy dark green trench coat with some torn brown jeans and boots spattered with mud. The figure's legs were also misshapen and uneven. One leg was swollen and was as thick as a car tire while the other leg was literally just skin and bones. The hair on the back of its head wax patchy and looked like a failed buzz cut. It stretched out its skinny arms like it was getting ready to point at something to the side. The figure's hands made finger scissors that opened and closed. I sat there completely in shock. My heart sank with the realization it was mocking me. A while back in school, I got bullied by this asshole who called me Snip Snip and would constantly make the same scissoring motion with his fingers. He called me this because, well, I'm a trans girl. I grunted in anger and I, I gestured for this thing to move to the side. Its back was facing me, so it didn't see. I had serious thoughts of running this thing over, but I remembered. If I don't mess with them, they won't harm me. I just drove around, and I didn't dare look in the rearview mirror to see its face. It was facing backwards for a reason. I still see it from time to time, and it's always... mocking me with that gesture. Mimicking something... something painful from my past sign language to mock my siblings who went deaf from an infection, waving a fist around violently to reference my physical ex, the gesture of holding a cigarette to make fun of my aunt who died of lung cancer, etc. This thing really pisses me off more than anything. Its mutated ass body is kind of... kind of unnerving, though. Number two, the eater. The Eater is a pretty common one I see on these roads at night. My first encounter with it was just like all the other times that I see this thing. It's semi-humanoid with pitch black skin and a very obese frame. It walks on all fours like a gorilla. It's tiny claws for hands. It's, its face is like a leech with dead glazed over eyes on the side of its neck. The gross thing has a long tongue. I'll see it early on my drives. The eater is usually crouched over a corpse of a dead animal with a chunk of the carcass meat in its hands. 
The eater just licks the meat with that long tongue. Just laps up gore and blood. I don't think it hunts. It's more of a scavenger. The eater is very docile and gets kind of curious when I pass by. It doesn't get too close, though. Sometimes I'll throw some leftover dinner that I have into the tall grasses for it. I still wouldn't touch it if you fucking paid me. Live and let live is what I've learned in these places. Number three. Skinless. Skinless is one of the more dangerous things out in these woods. Whenever I see her, I immediately turn around and I go straight home. She's a skinless woman, hence the name. In a white dress soaked in blood. Her flayed body is always bleeding and she has a large butcher's knife clenched in her hand. She appears in the tall grass and will stumble towards your car slowly. She's slow, but she will catch up eventually. Skinless will stand by your driver's side window and tap her knife against the glass. She'll ask you if she's beautiful in a voice that echoes through your soul. It sounds like a much more demonic voice is speaking under hers. If you lock eyes with Skinless, you'll have the uncontrollable urge to gag or to throw up. If you do throw up or gag, she'll violently smash your window and try to flay your skin off. I've only had this happen once, and I'm... I managed to speed off before she could shatter the window. She kept screaming about how she'll skin me alive. If you do basically anything, she'll kill you. I haven't really bothered to try saying yes, because it's nearly impossible with the crippling fear and that sick feeling you get in your stomach. Your best option is to just drive away before she catches up. Once you get out of those grasses and civilization, you're pretty much fine. I may write about my first encounter with Skinless in a separate post. If, if you see her in the distance, just turn around. Don't look back. Number four. Headlights. This is by far the most dangerous creature that I've encountered on my drives. If you see this thing, you better go as fast as you can in the other direction and pray to every single goddamn deity that you know. I almost stopped going on drives after I met this thing. Last month, I was on a drive that was eerily calm. There was nothing. No wind, no rattling, not even any strange apparitions. I thought it was strange. I slowed down slightly while driving, and my eyes darted to every corner of the tall grass in the forest. There was just it was absolutely nothing. Skinless usually scare off some other entities and animals, but she only appears once every couple of weeks. This was different. This continued until I reached an old farm at the edge of the tall grass. I usually pull to a crawl and look at the barn. Sometimes there's shadows or strange ram-like creatures that walk by the windows. Nothing walked by the windows. Strangely, the absence of any horrible monster was just making me afraid. That's when I saw it. Two huge headlights stabbing my eyes like two suns. I heard the rumbling sputter of a damaged engine. In, in front of me was a 1940-style truck painted completely black. A sense of impending death fell over me like a macabre blanket, and I quickly fumbled with the stick shift to put my car in reverse. I finally floored it as a scream erupted from the inside of the truck. The scream was was not of this world. It ripped all the joy I had in my heart out and into the starless night and whatever was driving that thing was pure evil he was an ancient force of malice like the boogeyman or the devil the truck engine growled and it peeled after me while i was in reverse i didn't have time to run around or else it, it would cut me off and crash into me and eventually i reached a clearing where i could turn around and putting all of my weight into turning the steering wheel i zoomed down the forgotten stretch of road with the truck in hot pursuit my radio came to life with a piercing roar of static. It played an audio that haunts me to this day. A woman was screaming in pure fear. 
a deep primal howl of pure dread. In the background of her screams was that old Here Comes the Boogeyman song. A masculine voice could also be heard mumbling. There was a slicing sound and the woman's screams somehow got louder. I peered into the rear view again to see another horrible thing. Two huge pale arms that were six feet long coming out from behind the black truck. The hands balled into fists and tried to slam into my rear window, but I quickly swerved, almost hitting a tree. These pale arms coming from the truck galloped along the ground, helping it gain speed. I, I soared out of the old roads and pulled onto a modern street and slammed the brakes at a gas station. And as I caught my breath, refueled from that horrible experience, I noticed my radio was spewing a choppy static. It sounded like a dying moan. Yeah. Yeah, I, I haven't been out driving for a while after, I think. I think I'm going to start taking a different route. But if you do find yourself there, remember to chuck some meat out in the field. Look out for skinless. And don't even think about heading to that barn. Hey there, kids, it's me, Mr. Pasta. I want to tell you thank you so much for watching today's video on YouTube or listening to today's episode of the podcast on the podcast. Tonight, I'm going to let you know about a couple of authors that I really love their work of, and I think all of you have too. Usually in my live streams, you guys will tell me some of your favorite stories, but these ones constantly show up, and I feel like a lot of you don't know that there's actual novels that continue on from the stories that you just hear on YouTube. And in some cases, I even do the audiobooks for them that you can find on Audible. Three of which I'm going to let you know about right now. The Neverglades, Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 3 are available right now on Amazon, both on Kindle and on paperback. And My Tiny Town Just Got Put on Lockdown is available on Amazon as one major novel that contains both Season 1 and Season 2, which is not done on the channel yet, as well as a brand new one called The Study, an Effluvium Hayes novel, which continues the story of My Tiny Town Just Got Put on Lockdown. And of course, I think one of everybody's favorite series is on here, Tales from the Gas Station, currently has a fourth volume that has just come out. I did the audio books for volume one through three. Four will come out eventually. So without further ado, I want to give a very big thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Bobby Carmen, Tanya Oren, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, That One Guy, Lupita Galvin, That Creepy Chick, Tyler Fletcher, Rebecca Harper, Murky Moo, Red Shadow Cat, Xavier the Cheyenne, Demix, Sean Caddo Baker, Six Gay Rats in a Trench Coat, Turtle Man, Rob Like Sharp Things, Chaos Art, Cryolinian, Milk and Meal, Zachary Grafius, Gorang Tramagasi, Maria Walker, Pain Gravy, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Aka Limchop, Dirt Diver, Matt Bach, Jabbles Raz, Voice of Sand, Coffee Zombie, Matthew McNeese, Shelly J, Jeremy H, Raltazal, Ficomel, Nana, Nick Weaver, Deleted Account, Melted Lake, Tolly Sue, Guy Mara Ravenswood, William King, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Nessie, Ronnie Hansen, Bardo Hawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Sashi Sazaku, Croconut 509, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Kaylee Ambrose, Suji Campbell, Trickin, Azarine Fox, Freddy Krueger, Nicholas Zaccardi, Happy Birthday, Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester's Lamb Guy Harbor, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, and Corey Kenshin. As always, thank you guys so very, very much. Thank all of you who are in the description down below, and honestly, thank all of you that can give anything, even when it comes down to just $1. I appreciate you guys very, very much. Sweet dreams. <laughs>